Hey there YouTube this is level one online back again and this video I wanted to talk about um, scan lines and how to uh, remove them if you don't like them in that image that I released I knew this was gonna be a topic that was gonna be brought up and this is a video I plan to do um, so if I do get asked this question, I'll just point you to this video. It's really simple on how to do it. And once you get the hang of it, um, you can have a lot of fun experimenting with different shaders. Um, and once you understand the terminology as well. First, uh, before I get started, I got a donation the other day. I got five bucks. I'm really thankful for that, so I appreciate it. I'll make sure to put a link to my PayPal in the description if you feel like donating. You don't have to, uh, but all donations are appreciated, so thank you. Um, so what I got right now on my screen, this is something called the RetroPie Toolkit, and I got this from a channel called Easy Hacks. And he has a lot of great info on um, RetroPie. And he's the one, uh, his particular video was the one that helped me get the high texture pack for the uh, Mario 64. There's actually a script for it right here. All I had to do was have the ROM in my uh, RetroPie, in my ROM folder for N64. And I just double clicked on this and it, it did all the work for me. And I just had to make sure that I had enabled the proper core, N64 core, that he specified in the video. All you got to do is follow the directions. And that's why on my particular 32 gigabyte release, that's why I enabled run command. Because you will need to go in there and, and you will need to change things up for that particular ROM. Um, if you want to, for example, play a different N64 game, like Zelda... Uh, you might have to use a different emulator. So I just wanted to put that out there. So in this RetroPie toolkit, there is a link here. Log into RetroPie command. So all you got to do is double click on that. And that's going to go ahead and launch that. It's going to automatically log in for you. Let me go ahead and go here and switch screens. Okay. So what we're going to do now is... You can hit the up arrow. Once you start using this, you can hit the up up and down arrows, and it'll show you the previous commands that you typed in. So, for example, I got here sudo reboot. Uh, the, the setup script, this was a audio configuration file I was messing with to get USB audio working. Um, so right here, this is what we need to type in to get into the, uh, the setup script. And I'll put this uh, command in the description as well. It's sudo space period slash capital R retro capital P pi a dash symbol setup with a capital S another slash and then all lowercase retro pi underscript setup dot sh. Okay, and it'll take us to this familiar screen. And you can actually get to the screen through the retro pi. Uh, menus yourself you just go to RetroPie settings and then you go to RetroPie setup and it'll take you to the same screen you can use your controller uh, the mapping might be a little different for certain controllers so what you want to do is you want to go right here to configuration and tools you want to go right here to config edit configure basic leave retro emulator options hit enter Configure default options for all Libretro emulators. So right here, render resolution. You can actually go ahead and unset that. Video shader enable. Okay. And that's the term that uh, the RetroPie uses for these filters. I, I knew them as filters, but they use the term shader. 
And that was the initial confusion when I started using RetroPie. I was looking for something called filters, and I couldn't find it. Then I found out, oh, they refer to them as shaders. Okay. So video shader enable, we're going to go ahead and unset that. Video shader file. This is the one that I was using up here, the zero zero. Basically what it is, a brief explanation is it was this one right here, CRT Pi. But what I did is I just adjusted some of the uh, brightness settings uh, to just let up on some of the, the darkness because it, it would look really dark uh, when I would use CRT Pi. And that's because of the monitor that I use. I have the brightness turned down just so it doesn't sting my eye so much. This one right here, this is this one, the 2X SAL, but it's just tuned down just a little bit. Just the intensity is tuned down just a little bit. Okay, so feel free to experiment. One I highly recommend for your Game Boy Advance is called BSNES. It's right here. Okay, and I'll get to that in just a moment. So anyways, what we want to do is you want to hit unset. So now you can actually exit out of here at this point. Just hit cancel and just go back or you can just hit the X at the top right and close out of that and just restart your emulation station and you will get you will not get any scan lines any filters shaders whatsoever you're just gonna see straight pixels it's gonna look very pixelated um, and that's why I decided to use filters in the first place because I took my retro pie to like to a video game party and when I showed it off you know these were people who actually collect retro physical copies of retro games and play it under CRTs and when I showed them retro pie they're like it looks great but one thing, it just looks really pixelated. And then when I enabled the shaders, it was like, oh, that looks that looks perfect. And everybody I showed that night, they really loved the shader. They didn't like the pix pixelated look. They wanted that classic CRT feel. Okay. And the great thing about RetroPie and these emulators is that it's really optimized. So, you know, you're not going to feel any uh, controller lag. And that was the big issue. Uh, when I started getting into like competitive gaming is the issue with lag, you know, and when you play games competitively, you can start to notice it after a while, you know, certain monitors, certain setups, certain controllers, you know, if you, you will see the lag and it, it'll just spoil your fun. So one thing I do want to recommend, so that's how to go ahead and configure that. You can come back here and if you want to configure just a specific system, so, for example, that one filter I mentioned for Game Boy, you can go right here, configure additional options for GBA. You can go right here to Video Shader Enable. You hit True. Video Shader File, B, S, N, E, S. I highly recommend giving that a shot. It's going to make your Game Boy Advance games look like almost like a Super Nintendo game. Because uh, I noticed those Game Boy Advance games, they were really washed out. Uh, and this intensifies the colors and yeah, it just, trust me, give it a shot. This right here overlay, these, from what I understand are the left and right. Um, you know how you have the blocks, the black lines on the left, ha left hand side and the right hand side, if you're using a widescreen monitor. So what this will do, it'll fill up those, the left and the right. Uh, with a picture. I did try it once. I did notice a slight performance hit. Feel free to experiment. Now, let me see. Overlay shader file. So, what I'm noticing right now is there is not any of them downloaded. I'm going to show you really quick how to do that. You would need to backtrack a little bit. We're going to go to manage packages. Manage core packages. We're going to go here to RetroArc. Configuration and options. Manage overlays. It says not installed. Like I said, by stock, it is not installed. Okay. Uh, the image I released, I try to leave everything as stock as possible. It's to guarantee the, the least chances of things getting screwed up. So you go to manage overlays. 
and you can go ahead and install update overlays and then that'll become available to you when you go to back to that section and uh, check out an overlay also right here manage assets what this is when you go into retro arc there's two styles there's a green screen and there is also the XMB setup that refers to it looks like the PlayStation 3 menus or the, the original uh, PlayStation Portable. Okay. And a way to uh, enable that is I'll go ahead and show you. We're going to go back to configuration and tools, config edit. You can go to advanced. These options right here, I do not recommend doing manual edits unless you really know what you're doing. Don't go in there. Just go to Configure Libretto. And it's the same concept. You can either go into All, and it'll do the configuration for all the cores, or you can just do a specific one. Okay. So I'm going to take PSX, for example. And right here, you can specify, like, the menu driver. Okay. RGUI is the one by default. Or you can set it to XMB. Okay, if you're going to use XMB, you're going to, I recommend, it'll still function, but I recommend downloading those assets so it looks the way it's supposed to look. Okay, and then there's more specialized settings you can mess with over here. Lots, lots and lots of things to do. If you want to see the frame rate on some of your games, you just go right here, FPS show, you can set that to true. Okay. So with PSX, for example, let's go back. Let's go to basic. And right here, for example, let's say you do true. And we're going to use one that really gives a performance hit, like XBR, for example or Super Tusai, or Super Eagle, like these, you know, you're going to see a performance hit. So let's enable that. So what you can do a trick, render resolution, just set it to a lower resolution, 640 by 480, and test it out. And go back, enable the frames, so you can get a read while you're playing the game, see if it dips under 60. So that's a great way to test out different uh, settings, different shaders, figure out you know also with particular shaders for example I noticed with CRT Pi when I had it set to 1080p when I had it set like this CRT Pi I noticed the uh, temperature gauge like a thermometer would pop up it was overheating my system so if you notice you get that uh, little thermometer at the top right you know what I'd recommend doing is just to stop what you're doing and go ahead and make an adjustment. Um, you would probably at that point need to get like a little fan. Or if you don't have a heat sink, definitely need to get a heat sink. Okay. The other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to show off how to run XML Scraper. Um, but I'm actually in the middle of scraping something right now. But while I'm here... There is a built-in scraper. There's so many videos out there on how to do this. But it's right here. The uh, scraper for emulation station. Um, when you run this, it's not going to let you run it unless you hit F4 with your keyboard. And go ahead and exit out of emulation station. Okay. So right here, these are settings you're just going to have to play with and mess with. I don't know which one's the best. I assume maybe the default ones are the best. And right here, you hit uh, Scrape Chosen System, for example. Let's say you only want to scrape your PSX. So what you do is you hit the space bar to select it. And then you go ahead and hit Enter. I'm not going to scrape it because I'm actually scraping something else right now. Thumbs up and scrape. You can also do an update of it right here.
And that's about it for now. Once again, thanks again for coming by my channel. Hope you guys have a good one. Take care.